All right, so last time I took a look at how to create uh, layouts and put things into the layouts. So we put a grid in the center. At the top, we put in two uh, labels, a button, and a text uh, area. So now, what we'd like to do is actually make those buttons do something. At the moment, you can click on them as happily as you like, and it does nothing other than like change the picture of the, um, of the button. If I run this, <laughs> this does nothing, this does nothing, this does nothing. We. Indeed, that shouldn't have happened to you. Um, yeah, you might want to actually. What we've got so far. So we have a frame, a J frame, because we're using the swing classes, and they put a J on the front of every single one of those. J frame is the little window that pops up. By default, what it has is a little close button and then the central control area. We have a three by three grid of buttons. So just like integers, characters, whatever else we make, you can make arrays which are of a particular object type. This uh, grid here, we're going to use to keep track of our uh, X and O player, just like we did in the previous project. And in fact, we can even steal some of the code from that previous project. As far as everything else that we did last time, it was all about layouts, uh, setting how it closes, things like that. So other than having this public static void main, which just creates a new one, the first thing I did was I set the size of the frame. This is 600 pixels by 400 pixels. I set the frames layout to be a border layout. So in this frame, this down here is the center. This up here is the north. East and west and south don't have anything, so they don't show up. So border layout has basically five sections. I created a container. The container is basically just something you put things into. The container has a grid layout. That's what this up here is. This is a grid layout, which is two by two. I add in the various pieces I need. So I created uh, two labels, a button, and a text field. Those are the things that show up up here. I added the frame, which I named north, to the border layouts north. Next, I created another container named playing field. That's where I put all of the buttons in. This is a three by three grid. And then I used a pair of for loops to basically walk through and put all the buttons in. So all of these are in there now with the X and the Y position. I actually added to the frame here at the center. So I added the container name playing field there. I make it so that my program stops running when I hit the X button, which it doesn't by default. And then I made my frame visible. So a lot of stuff with layout. Now I'd like to actually make it so it does something. So to begin with, all I'm going to do is just, when I click on a button, I'm just going to say hi or something like that. So every time I click on one of these things, this button is doing something called an action. So the action is when I press on this. I need to create a special method called action performed to take advantage of this. <laughs> So what's going to happen is, in the action performed, I'm going to go through and say, hey, um, if this thing was clicked on, please do something. For this particular class, my GUI tic-tac-toe, to be allowed to do that, there's a special keyword I need to place right after this public class. Notice this is not the public constructor. This is something different. This is the constructor here. Public class is where I need to put these keywords. And what I need to say is implements, implements, there we go. Action listener. It's going to complain until I import that in. So let me import this. It's in java.awt.out. 
event, and I'm just going to import everything from that. And that allows me to use an action listener. Anything that's an action listener can listen for button presses or pushing enter in text fields, things like that. Now, notice it's still complaining. And the reason why it's complaining is, is it's saying, hey, you have to do action performed if you're going to be an action listener. Putting this line here basically promises I'm going to make an, uh, a method that will deal with any actions that are happen. So down here after the constructor, I'm going to create a very special method called action performed. Uh, I think I will do event as the name of this. And there we go. So this event is what happens whenever a button is pressed. So as soon as I press any button that uh, I'm listening for, it's going to run this action perform thing. Now there's some information I have about this particular event, and that's what this action event event is. I've named my event event, being very <laughs> clever. So when I ask the event, hey, who was it that clicked on you? It'll be able to tell me. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say, you clicked a button. So I just want to make sure the buttons are working. Now, if I run this, it's not going to quite work yet. There's one more thing that I actually need to add in. The thing that I need to add in is I actually have to have the buttons say that the, this GUI tic-tac-toe class is going to deal with when they're clicked. So after I create the button, which is up here in the two for loops, so I create it here because I say new J button. I'm going to say buttons i j dot add action listener. <laughs> and the thing that's going to be listening for button presses is this class, the GUI tic-tac-toe class. So the keyword this is referring to the current class. So when I say add action listener this, it says well, whenever I'm pressed, you should tell GUI tic-tac-toe to do something about that. Because I'm doing this in the loop, every single one of my buttons, each one of the IJ buttons, is going to add this action listener. That's because you typed it in wrong. So just to show you, when I run this, notice down here in the console, it says you clicked a button.